My name is Devon Shipley. I grew up in this valley, not right here on the town site, but across the valley at a place called Topons. And uh, so my family has very deep roots here. The people who lived in this house were my great grandparents, James and Ruth Davids. To better understand who they were, we need to go back a little ways and help you with a little history of their lives. There was a man who was uh, who came across the plains from uh, with into Salt Lake, and he was a colonizer. Brigham Young asked him to go down to Fillmore, Utah, and he was the colonizer that built Fillmore, Utah, originally. While he was uh, in Fillmore, he made good friends with the Indian people, and uh, one day he got a call or he got a knock on his door, and there was an Indian friend there, and he said, I have two Indian children that I'd like you to take from me. I'd like, you to, I'd like to sell them to you. Anson was reluctant at first, but then decided, well, why not? I will, I will take these children, because he knew that if he didn't take them, they might have a very bad fate in the long term, because the Indians were taking these children and selling them into Mexico for slaves, and also some of the women. And so uh, Anson was sympathetic to their needs, and he purchased these two young children with a little bit of corn and a little bit of flour. Now, keep in mind that Anson was there with a second wife, and so he had his first wife was named Mary. She lived up in Bountiful. So Anson bought these children, and he took them up to Bountiful and came to Mary and said, look, I have a gift for you. I have two Indian children for you. Can you imagine how she might have felt as those two Indian children were brought to her by her husband? But he couldn't keep them down in Fillmore. So actually, uh, his first wife, Mary, was the one who raised the two children. One was a boy, one was a girl. And uh, as the girl got a little older, she was about 14 years old. Uh, there was another man that came into the valley with Johnson's army. His name was James Davids. James Davids was not a member of the army itself, but he was a, a mule skinner. In other words, he drove the wagons that carried the supplies. When he got to Salt Lake, uh, he decided that he didn't want any part of what was going on there, and so he decided that he would um, defect. And so he defected from the army and asked Anson Call if he could give him a job, which he did. Anson had a farm in the Bountiful area, and he gave uh, James Davids a job on his farm. Well, now here's uh, there's this opportunity for James to get acquainted with the little Indian girl. Her name was Ruth. And uh, as he a little after, as he stayed there and worked for a few years, he decided that he and Ruth decided that they'd like to get married. And uh, he came to Anson Call and he said, "May I take Ruth for my wife?" Anson said to him, "Okay, you can have her for your wife, but it with on one condition, and that is, if you ever feel like you can't keep her anymore, do not abandon her." you must bring her back to me. He agreed to that. Now keep in mind now that Ruth is growing up in the Anson Call home, which is the same home that Chester Call was raised in. Chester Call is the one who actually founded Chesterfield. So when he came to Chesterfield, James Davids with his new bride moved to Chesterfield with them and built a log, a log cabin. Uh, the log cabin was formerly about a mile and a half from here, but uh, in the restoration process, they cataloged every single log and put it back in this and built this cabin in this spot exactly as it was put together originally with the same logs in the same places. They didn't have much money back then and they had to get by with what they had. They had a lot of dirt and so they put dirt on some of the roofs and it worked out pretty well. Sometimes it leak a bit, but generally they, they worked out pretty well for them. Ruth 
had special talents. She was quite well educated, having grown up in Bountiful, and uh, she seemed to know a lot about medicine and plants that you could be used for medicine and those kinds of things. And so she kind of became the nurse or doctor for the Chesterfield area. When everyone, when someone gets sick, they would come to what they called Aunt Ruth. A couple of interesting stories. One is she, uh, she loved to uh, play the organ, play the piano, that she had learned how to do that. And one day Uncle Jim went to Bancroft and purchased a, an organ. She didn't know about it. And he loaded it on the wagon and he and several of his friends headed for Chesterfield with this organ. Well, one of, some of the people could play the organ and evidently it was quite a spectacular sight. Them pulling the wagon, men playing the organ and singing all the way from Bancroft to Chesterfield. And so the organ is here. When you go inside, you will see her organ still exists. Some of the furniture and some of the dishes and those kinds of things were original, some that she had originally. They raised six children in this home, one of which was my grandmother. And uh, so they have a pretty rich heritage in the valley. Almost every one of the children of James and Ruth grew up here in Chesterfield. And there are several David's people still live in this general area.